This is Inside M Side, your favorite podcast for all things Morningside. Here's stories from students, alumni, faculty, and more about what makes the Morningside experience so special. Well, thank you so much, Jim and Sharon Walker, for joining us on Inside M Side, our podcast, going into the stories and some of the details and profiling people that you may or may not know about and that have had an incredible impact on Morningside, its history, and where we're going in the future. And so we're so grateful that the two of you would join us um, for this episode and have just a conversation about yourselves. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you. But we're looking forward to it also. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think just to get it kicked off, uh, why don't the two of you tell us just a little bit about um, yourself, your family, what are you, where are you living, kind of what are you doing these days? Well, we, we're mainly retired now. This is a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> it is. But uh, we still have some business interests, but we live in Minnesota, uh, and then we try to spend some time every year in Hawaii, um, and that's where we are right now. We're, um, we're still active in our church and in supporting faith-based service organizations in the U.S. and around the world, and um, we have a lot of family. We have 46 nieces and nephews, um, oh that four generations, so we love that, and uh, every two or three years, we host a big family reunion at a resort in Minnesota, and it's a wonderful way to stay connected. We love to do that stay connected to the family um yeah yeah it's a, it's a um, big family <laughs> and jim, jim loves being involved with morningside he's so grateful he's still in job involved with morningside all the time we both love that and we love to talk well, about and, morningside and still so connected and i was going to say i tell you what um going through minnesota winters definitely would make so that you want to have a place in Hawaii. So I'm glad that you're enjoying that. And that's talk about a tale of two different weathers. That's for sure. But that's true. I'm glad you guys are able to enjoy that in retirement a little bit. Yeah. Well, now um, tell me, Jim, just a little bit how the two of you came about to go to Morningside. I've heard some stories about what this journey was to get you here. I mean, I talk to a lot of prospective students and hear about maybe how they heard about Morningside or what ultimately brought them here. Um, but tell us your story, share that a little bit. Well, I'm gonna abbreviate mine and Sharon's gonna expand a bit. Uh, I went to Morningside because Sharon got a presidential scholarship and I didn't even know where it was located. But I, <laughs> I, but I, I filed an application and uh, was lucky enough to get accepted. And then I got a map out and actually figured out it was in Sioux City, <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. We had dated in high school. Um, so we had been going together in high school. And um, we, I picked Morningside because it had an excellent um, reputation for a wonderful education and the affiliation with the Methodist Church. I had looked at other colleges, but the fit was just Morningside. Once I got on the campus, I knew that was it. And so I was really excited when Jim decided to go to Morningside as well. That was, that was a great blessing. Yeah. And I hear that so much from students too, that, that uh, especially when they're in high school and coming to visit, just the experience that they have on those college visits, it just kind of solidifies their interest and their desire to come here. And so it's so great hearing that it was even that case back when you were visiting and then um, making sure to drag Jim along with you. So we're, we're grateful that you did that too. So am I. Well, as soon as we walked on the campus, we knew it was the right place for us. It just fit. And I always encourage students to visit a campus and one of them will just say, hey, this is, this is the place. It'll speak to you really well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So talk to us a little bit about that experience. I mean, what was Morningside like then as a student? Um, and maybe what were some of your favorite memories or experiences? What were you guys involved in? Well, we worked very hard academically and we had several jobs. So um, it was a challenging time as well as an exciting time. Jim worked uh, 30 to 40 hours a week at two different jobs. And he also took 15 hours a semester. And uh, it was a sobering time, remember? This was the 60s and the Vietnam War was raging. Uh, many of our high school and college classmates were already in Vietnam. And so um, Jim was in the National Guard officers training and he was hoping to finish college before being assigned to a unit that was deployed to Vietnam. 
So that was his third job. Um, and I worked 30 hours a week at two different jobs. I was an RA and I worked in the admissions office and I took 18 hours and finished in three and a half years. So wow. we were very busy. <laughs> yeah, that is incredible. We were also involved though in a lot of activities. Jim was in a fraternity. He was in the Teak fraternity and uh, student government. Jim was in student government as well. I was in the education association and an officer in the dorm and some other associations. And we attended a lot of activities. We went to recitals and plays and sporting events. We always went to the weekly dances. They had dances in those days. I think that's one of our favorite memories is we got engaged at the winter formal one year at, um, at, no. at the event. So that was a sweet memory. We have pictures of that. We'll send you a picture of that. Yes, please do. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a wonderful time to to be on campus. Had an outstanding faculty and mm -hmm. and really a, a lot of great students. And I think it's pretty well known around campus that the class of 1970 never disengaged. Uh, we have nine board members uh, out of uh, 23 that are from the class of 70, mm -hmm. and they're very involved in many many activities on the campus and have been since we graduated it's it's really a joy to have everybody still involved with the campus it is it is and and we got married um the summer before our senior year and then we lived in a little house um off campus um for the senior year it's incredible for me even hearing your story you know i i hear from students all the time talking about how busy they are you know, and how busy and they have all of these things going on. And so hearing your story and just how you were trying to juggle whether it was full-time jobs or part-time jobs and along with your full load and then thinking too of your involvement on campus. I mean, that was a lot to handle. And I'm sure, especially during that time with Vietnam, I mean, even things just weighing on you emotionally and thinking about your friends that were overseas and things like that too, that had to be a struggle. Yeah, it did. Uh, it's kind of interesting too, Sharon and I were kidding last night that uh, and there's nobody on the faculty now that remembers me as a student, so I can say this. I think I spent more time preparing for this than I might have for a lot of my classes when I was in school. Oh, that's funny. Well, and, and it was great kind of learning a little bit about your involvement because, Jim, I didn't realize that you and I kind of have um, some similarities in that. See, when I was on campus, I was a Delta SIG, and then I also joined student government. So we were in a couple of those same things. And I look back on those days pretty fondly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, and then after, after college, uh, Sharon and I uh, stayed in Sioux City for a while. Sharon taught in the Sioux City School District. And uh, I worked in admissions and I worked in financial development at Morningside for a couple of years. And, and then uh, we moved away and I went to work for Old Northwest Company in Minneapolis. And uh, Sharon became a teaching leader in Bible study fellowship in Minneapolis. And then my partner and I sold the company in 1998 and still had some real estate holdings after that. So really we we drifted away from the college in distance but never uh never away from the college in our heart and we were back on campus a lot uh they kid me all the time somewhere along the line they made me a lifetime member of the board of directors and i don't like the way you get off that commitment <laughs> Yeah, which is, which is right. not to be alive. We're delaying that as much as we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we stay in touch with many of our friends at Morningside. We just got a letter from one of them um, today. Well, we're the age we still write letters. And we got a letter <clears throat> from one of them yesterday. So uh, we also became great friends with staff and faculty and have stayed friends uh, over the decades. And we were friends with uh, the last five presidents and their spouses as well. So we have been very fortunate to know so many people at Morningside. It's been a real blessing. Well, and two, we even think about, um, I mean, just how times have changed, right? It was staying connected to things. And what I love about the two of you is even when you went to Minneapolis or went up into Minnesota, 
you did keep that strong bond and that strong connection. And it wasn't in the day of age of social media and, you know, updating profiles or, you know, staying connected in that way, but you didn't let distance come between you. You really made sure to keep that connection strong, which is something that I think we all really appreciate. And so tell me a little bit about um, really, because we, we glanced over a little bit. I mean, Talk about the education that you received at Morningside a little bit. Sharon, I mean, you had to be really well prepared going into teaching and into the school system. And I mean, thinking about going up into what you were doing in Minnesota and Jim kind of with that business acumen too. I mean, um, it really seems like Morningside really set you up well um, to be successful in those areas. Uh, we were very blessed to have just an outstanding faculty when we were in at, at Morningside and we got to know them as friends and uh, many became mentors over the years. Uh, and I think it's important to always recognize that Morningside is a very special place and something very special happens there. Uh, people have strong commitments. Our dear friend, Fred Erbus is an example who recently passed away. Yeah. Yeah, he stayed involved with the college from the day he graduated till the day he passed away. And that's a remarkable story. And I worked with Fred uh, when I worked as a student in the admissions office. Fred had just started part-time in the admissions office. So known Fred for over 50 years. <laughs> so Yeah, he was such a great man. And I mean, well, just another example of the powerful connection um, that you can have, because what was great about Fred too was, to your point, he was so connected up until those last moments because he had just been on campus donating some of his formal attire, some of the things that he was wearing and, and wanted to pay that forward so that students would have, you know, whether it was suits and ties and things oh, like that wonderful. when they were going to interviews. And so it was, I mean, gosh, and that was just a couple of weeks um, before his passing. And so we even, the business department had a picture of him donating that. And so it's, it's just those type of meaningful connections and those um, alumni, those people that have dedicated um, their life to really the betterment of Morningside and just making it the place that it is. I really, I really believe that. And so it's been great to kind of get to know some of those people in my role. And I mean, I've only been here at Morningside now nine years, um, but to think of the impact that, that you all and, and some of these other folks have made is just incredible. Well, and it's kind of interesting too that the the university and uh i finally have gotten away from calling it a college <laughs> we're, it took me a while. <laughs> we're all trying that's for sure the university fell on some very difficult times as you know yeah. uh, back in the uh, late 80, 80s and early 90s and i think it was a rallying call for many people to say this place is too good to lose we came very close to losing it and and i think uh, that is something we should always remember. It's a wonderful place, but it has to be protected. It has yeah. to be honored and it has to, it has to move forward. Uh, it was a very bleak time, uh, particularly when John inherited the presidency. My first question to John was what in the world are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thinking of the world of opportunity. I mean, because you're exactly right. And he's often said, you know, that he considers the two of you to really be like family and how the two of you really kind of shared and shaped um, what that was going to look like and your leadership and how it was important, not only to him, but the institution, you know, and thinking about your experience that was there. Can you talk about those first days? I mean, when John arrived, obviously, um, you know, that's the question that you posed to him, but what was it like? seeing him kind of evolve into that role and, and where did he take it? And what do you think the lessons that you were able to impart and that he learned? Just as kind of a background on it, when John arrived on the Morningside campus 22 years ago, we'd had 13 years of deficit spending. Uh, we'd had a small endowment. We had the smallest freshman class in the modern history of the institution. Uh, we hadn't won a football game for 110 years or something like that. <laughs> right? uh, Gosh. The, the morale on campus was very low and, and the faculty was really impaired. And that's the, the scenario that John walked into. And what happened, John developed a plan 
for improvement. And even though we only disclosed to the board his short-term five or six year plan, he had a 20 year plan in mind from the day he arrived at Morningside, I can guarantee you that. Uh, but he developed a plan and the plan began to show small improvements. Uh, we started a small capital campaign and uh, Sharon will talk about that in a minute, but the, the Science Center was the way we kicked that off because it, it was apparent to us that somebody had to show some confidence in the institution. Uh, and then John began very slowly by following through on everything he said he was going to do. Uh, he scaled back the faculty, which was very difficult for him. He increased enrollment by using professional standards of enrollment, which were kind of new to Morningside. Uh, he developed a plan for campus improvements. He developed a plan for athletics in the GPAC conference. He developed a plan for uh, resolving the budget issues and he, and he started to increase faculty compensation. So as this rolled out over a period of a couple of years, it became apparent to people that the place was really gonna get a lot better than it had been for a long time. And then he started the most transformational phase and that was actually enhancing and developing the fiscal plan. I mean, we all remember the parking lot or many of us do behind Lewis Hall, but really that was the, the linchpin that began to move the college forward from success to success. And John was a great storyteller and vision painter and people could buy into what he was saying. But more importantly, he delivered on everything he said he was going to deliver on and he did it professionally, he executed on time, and he made sure that there was great involvement with the faculty, students, staff, and a board of directors and friends of the college. And he'd tell me often when we went out to call on someone, don't screw it up. Now, I know you've all heard that a number of times. I just wanted to let you know, it wasn't just exclusive to faculty and staff. He, he said that to everybody, but... Yeah. Uh, he, he really developed a terrific plan and delivered on his promises. And that's a remarkable success story because John took an institution that was really struggling and brought it to a position of preeminence. And I would say without question, John Reinders was the most transformational president in the history of Morningside University. Yeah. And he was willing to make the tough decisions. There were so many tough decisions that had just been deferred and deferred and deferred. And he was willing to do that. And that's, <clears throat> that was very courageous of him. Yeah. Well, and especially some that were unpopular. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you both were with him during those days where, gosh, we were just talking about some of the editorials <coughs> that were even written about that time of changing divisions. You know, I mean, Gosh, you had spoke about the football team, right? And how we weren't winning any games and, and how I'm sure it was still scary to change divisions and think about change in that way. But for him to be able to have that vision and have mentors such as yourself that would buy in and support him in that way. I mean, I, I think it's so incredible and it was, it was truly transformational. John and I had fun on Mondays sharing uh, vicious emails that would receive yes. <laughs> over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. From Nancy. Yeah. Well, and, and it's one of the things you talked about um, that I think for those listeners or those people watching that maybe don't even get insight to or don't fully appreciate or understand is the physical transformation that has happened on this campus. I mean, I remember when I very first came here, I remember the parking lot you're talking about, the two level asphalt parking lot. I'm pretty sure at one point there was a pothole so large, my wheelchair could have fit in it. You know, I mean, it was one of those things where, gosh, we were seeing such changes when that would go out. And then, um, gosh, I remember the practice football field and some of those things and just how campus has been able to transform in the investment that our alumni and our board and individuals such as yourself, the investment that you took and you made in this campus under that leadership. I mean, and I, I guess I, I should mention too, that I think, you know, 
whether it's students or young alumni or others that are listening, you know, maybe they didn't even notice your name, but really the, the investment that you made, I mean, the Walker Science Center bearing your name or the Sharon Walker School of Education. I mean, that's the type of investment that the two of you have made and to have been a part of that, that transformation that has taken place. And so kudos to you and really rallying behind John's leadership. I think, I think it's been incredible, but really, I mean, you've seen that come to fruition. You saw that vision take place. Yeah. I, I have one unique story about John and fundraising. If I could throw that in here, please. Uh, under a prior president, I traveled with that prior president to the Kresge Foundation to ask for a proposal to enhance the faculty. Uh, when we got done with our presentation with the executive chairman of Kresge, he said, I'm not going to grant your request and I'm going to go one step further and say the current status of your institution is such that I don't think it'll be here 10 years from now. Uh, we took that as a denial <laughs> yeah. of our grant proposal, <laughs> but 10 years later, John applied and John and I went to the Kresge Foundation after submitting our support material on the status of the college, met with the same executive director. He sat down and he looked at the data and he had studied it for weeks. And he said, at the end, I'm not going to grant your proposal. I'm going to increase it. Wow. Wow. The university pulled off something that even the Kresge Foundation didn't think was possible. In all 10 things that he outlined in his letter, everyone had been corrected with excellence. And I don't think he'd ever seen anything like it. And that was important to us in our fundraising because the Kresge money is the gold standard in terms of raising money for an institution. John can be very proud of that. Yeah. And I think the two of you leading for those successful fundraising campaigns, I think that that's something you can be proud of as well. Well, it is kind of amazing. Over the course of those three campaigns, one small one and two larger ones, yeah. we were really fortunate with a great committee, mm -hmm. a lot of people who worked very hard on this, but we're able to raise $120 million in those campaigns. And I think that's pretty amazing for a university our size. And it was because our faculty, our students, our board, friends of the college and alumni all bought into the direction of the college. And that solely rests on John's shoulders. You can take him to the bank and many did. Yeah, and, and the giving was sacrificial at every level. It didn't matter how much you gave. Uh, people gave sacrificially at every level um, to those campaigns, and it's what made Morningside uh, renewed and yeah. ready for the next century. And I think had extraordinary faith in that giving, you know, and in, in that vision of what was put forward and what was going to be possible. So Sharon, talk to me a little bit about your experience during those, those times as well. I mean, I, I can't imagine, you know, what you were going through, both of you, those fundraising campaigns and the transformation of campus. Well, we, we really um, talked it over, especially about that initial gift, um, because the, you know, the college was, ting it was on the brink. And so uh, we didn't know whether this was a good investment or not. And so we really talked that over a lot. And it was ironic because the one thing that John thought was important to do first was the science center. And um, science wasn't a strong subject for either one of us. No. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. It's not your our, specialties. <laughs> that's right. It wasn't our choice at all. And, uh, but we were so excited when we saw the plans and uh, very excited to be part of that. And we really didn't intend to have our name on it, but John said, if you put your name on it, I think other people will 
realize that Morningside is worth investing in. So, um, you know, that's, but, and, but we enjoy going there and seeing what a beautiful care they've taken care of the Science Center. That was um, our first biggest investment, I'd say. And then of course, in the campaign itself. But um, there are other things too we've done over the years that we really have enjoyed so much. And uh, one of them is the faculty award because after uh, talking about the physical plant and the needs there, then Jim and I said, you know, the faculty, they've just been through so much and their salaries were way behind where they should have been. And so we said, what can we do to, to encourage and enhance their situation? So when we uh, established the faculty award, that was one of the biggest joys we've uh, had over the years. We've really, really enjoyed that. And the School of Education being involved and helping with providing the building. Um, when I was on campus, we were on the third floor of Lewis Hall I remember Sharon Oker dragging the um, visual aids up. The it was a um, what what did overhead he, projector. Oh, that's right. He, he yeah. dragged that overhead projector up three floors so that he could show oh, us the most modern gosh. techniques. Pretty high tech. <laughs> so yeah, it was time for the education um, school of education, and it was time for them to have a facility that was up to date and um, you know worthy of the teaching that they they did there so that yeah, was to really reflect fun the work to reflect the work that they're doing and it's oh, such a beautiful facility now I mean to look over you know across from our offices and be able to see that and and just like you were saying I mean just to be proud you yeah. know that they're receiving their education there I mean it's it's something it's something really to marvel at well and that they have an appropriate facility for all that they do and the wonderful, wonderful teachers that they turn out to, that go across the United States and across the world in some cases and provide education for young people, but also for the nursing and for the agriculture. It was wonderful, it was a wonderful building and we're excited to be part of that. You bet. That, those were three of the things I think that were our, some of our favorites to be involved in. Over the yeah, year. well. And the, the other thing I was thinking is, you know, outside of the campaigns, there has been a lot to celebrate, you know, over those last 22 years of John's tenure. I really mm -hmm. wonder, you know, what Morningside moment or what achievement, um, and some of you have already listed too, I think that would be high on that list, but what would you say that you're most proud to have been a part of? Is there any moment or any achievement? Oh, I, I think... The crowning achievement for me was the fact that we knew that those two campaigns were critical to saving the college. And we exceeded our goal on both. Uh, and I think that's a tribute to the people, friends of the college, alumni, faculty, staff, alum everybody who contributed to those. And huge number of gifts some very large, some not so large, but all very important. And at the same time, our endowment is growing and we're protecting the institution from potential downslides in the future. So I'd say the crowning achievement for the institution was that, and this will sound funny, John's plan worked mm -hmm. because it included not only the financial side of the campaign, but strengthening the faculty and encouraging students. They are two of the most encouraging people, John and Robin, that I have ever met. Yes. And the fact that they had all those students in their home, the fact that they cared for them, the fact that they were on campus, the fact that Boomer became the, the dog of the century, all those are so yeah. important to the life of the college. But they didn't just preside over the college. They lived the college 24-7, 365. And to me, that was a crowning achievement, John and Robin's commitment to the institution. Mm -hmm. Because I know he could have gone any number of places and didn't. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. Sharon, was there anything specific to you that you really see as, as that greatest achievement or um, any of those moments that you would say you were most proud of? I so agree with Jim. And I think those 
three things, the initial gift that we gave for the Science Center and the Faculty Award, the School of Education, those are three of them. And we are very invested in this next campaign, this endowment, because uh, college or university endowment is the future of the institution, always. And so the more we can build that endowment and get people invested in it in big and small ways, um, that is so, so important. If you look at the um, this institutions that are thriving, they have substantial endowments. And that is uh, one of the investments we, we intend to make as well. So to the endowment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just ensure that students in the future will have the same opportunity to have the same experience or a similar experience that the two of you were fortunate enough to have. I just, I just hope, I mean, Jim, I hope there's a world out there where there are better haves and, you know, people that are bringing along future spouses too to come to Morningside. <laughs> <laughs> well, Morningside was lucky that Jim followed me because he's been wonderful for Morningside. Yes. Lovely, Jim. Oh, he's done a great job. Sure. <laughs> We've had a lot of help. <laughs> and Most he certainly. and John were a great team. They worked well together. Um, in their fundraising, they just were a great team as they went out to see people. I think that's also, now that I think of it, one of our um, exciting things is uh, Jim and John were able to get so many more people involved in Morningside and giving to Morningside and the joy that they get from giving to Morningside and being involved with Morningside and these young people. I think that's one of the thrills Jim has really enjoyed over the years. Yeah, and <clears throat> John is a master at being able to cultivate friendships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he does it quickly. And people just are encouraged to be around him because he's so darn positive. But uh, John and Sharon and, uh, and Robin, Robin and, and I, I are really our family. John is my brother. He's a dear friend, and uh, I can't. I, I hear lately that he's not considering the pontoon boat as much, which I'm hoping he might, you know, choose a more stable craft as he thinks about retirement. <laughs> Especially ocean going. The ocean yes. going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's seaworthy. That's, that's for right. sure. <laughs> that's exactly. Because right. as you know, John is so high tech. I'm not sure that he could run a sonar <laughs> and a radar and yeah. all the things he needs. He, he isn't even that fond of his cell phone. <laughs> yeah, right? That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I was thinking about, um, you know, over the course of his tenure, one of the things that I was thinking about, <gasps> and you touched on a little bit, were just those leadership traits of what made him such a great leader you know, and how he was able to rally people around that vision and just coalesce, bring people together for the common good of the institution, and then have people like you right there in his corner. And I think that we have a lot of alumni that have been graduating and maybe looking to take that next step in their organization or, you know, or their company, and they want to rise to those ranks or apply and and take those leadership roles. Is there anything that you learned from John? I mean, outside of things we've mentioned, you know, his ability to cultivate those friendships and those relationships. Was there anything else that you think our alumni or our students that might be listening that they should really work on and, and really um, strengthen in themselves if they want to be a leader much the way John was a leader here? His most outstanding trait is impeccable integrity. Mm -hmm. And that's a big statement because it permeates a lot of things. But John does what he said he's going to do. And then he does it with enormous energy. Now, I know that the uh, staff in particular and the faculty too, sometimes go absolutely bonkers <laughs> over his level of energy and his demands that he makes on people. But he just never slows down. He's got one gear, high gear, but it's always with impeccable integrity. So yeah. true, so true. And I think that um, one reason John is so beloved and such a success as, pre as president is that it has never been about him. It's never about 
you know, climbing a ladder or doing something or being in some national organization. It's always been about Morningside, about the students and their families and the student experience. That's always his focus. He always is looking out for the staff, the faculty, the alumni, the board of directors, the community. It's always about Morningside and about those groups. It's never about John. And yeah. that focus is um, a leadership trait that is hard to teach, but it's a wonderful trait if you can develop it. A mission bigger than yourself. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. A godly oh, mission. <laughs> now thinking, thinking forward, I mean, and thinking about all <laughs> the students that are on campus today, gosh, you even talked about one of the smallest enrollment classes, and now we're looking at the largest enrollment classes here over these last few years. I mean, what advice would you give to students? I mean, the two of you have had such successful careers, you know, and you attribute a lot of that to the education that you received here. And I mean, um, the experiences that you have and obviously the connection that you forged with this institution, what advice would you give to students that hopefully can follow down that path? Well, I think we'd both like to answer that question because we have a little different take on it, but I would say take advantage of your outstanding faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, basis, and they will enjoy that. Uh, stay connected to them when you graduate and keep them appraised of your success. We too often forgot the people that brought us to the dance, but the faculty were instrumental in their development. And they have such an opportunity at Morningside because they can get to know faculty and staff on a personal level. And they can use them as mentors and friends and help them in their career path. And I also encourage them to use alumni across the country. They're more than willing to help any student find their way uh, when they graduate and help them in any way they can. Uh, and the leadership opportunities made available to them on the campus. Make sure you take advantage of those because yeah. it's a unique place. If you go to the University of wherever, your chances of a leadership position are pretty zero. If you have a, a chance at Morningside, get involved, take a leadership role, do something significant. It will be a great help in you and your career. Uh, and then most of all, realize how fortunate you are to be a Morningsider. So true. And I agree with Jim. I, I, I would say to students, work hard. Don't, don't uh, just casually go through your time at Morningside, but work hard, but have fun too. Take time to have fun. And I agree with Jim. Stay in touch with your faculty and staff uh, also when you leave Morningside and enjoy their encouragement and their wisdom as you build your career. And I also say, take advantage of those times uh, and be, be involved in some group, any group, it doesn't matter what, but something that interests you where you get a chance to work together with people on a team and maybe be an officer in the group or a leader of some kind in the group. Jim and I and two um, people from our family, one from Jim's side of the family and one from mine have graduated from Morningside. It's been fun to watch the younger generation and what they were involved in and how they, they have stayed in touch uh, with the professors. And that's been a really good thing for them. They took advantage of some leadership roles on the campus that you could see them grow through that and how that's helped them as they moved out into the world. So I say definitely take advantage of those things and stay in touch, use those wonderful faculty and staff for um, resource. And also the alumni, they would love to mentor you. And I know the uh, Alumni Association will con you know, connect them with someone any place they happen to go. So use those resources and enjoy that networking. Well, yeah, many, as most people who graduated with us know, if I had to do over again, I'd just have some fun. I just, <laughs> I didn't have a lot. <laughs> If I'd had any more fun, I'd still be in school. It was a good thing Jim yeah. worked for many hours so he couldn't get in too much trouble. <laughs> yeah, oh, most definitely. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that too, though. You know what I mean? Is, yeah. is to definitely enjoy yourself and enjoy the time that you have with the friends that you have surrounded because um, the realities of life sometimes hit you pretty quickly when you're outside of, outside of Morningside. 
Well, and we, have, you know, it wasn't an easy time with the Vietnam War. You did, like you say, that was always <clears throat> on your shoulder. But, you know, we did know to have fun. It's a unique experience when you are immersed in your education. You're living your education. You know, you live near the campus or on the campus and you're with those people all the time. That's a unique opportunity and you probably won't get that again in your lifetime. So it's, it's important to take advantage of and enjoy it. Absolutely. So I'd like to mention too, when we were talking about students, we went through a recent presidential search and uh, in that search process, students were really involved both on the committee and they were excellent on our committee mm -hmm. and in the open forums. And I was so impressed with the level of our students' professionalism and their frankness in their questions, the depth of their questions, and the interface with the candidates and their spouses as they came through. It was a real tribute to Morningside. They were just extraordinary in every way. And the candidates were extremely impressed by the students and their questions and responses, um, their interest, how many people turned yeah. out to attend the forums. They were just stunned by the students at Morningside. Yeah, and just the thoughtfulness that they had. You know, I attended a number of those forums and it was great to see um, the level of, like you said, professionalism, professionalism and just that they, they understood the gravity of the decision before us. Yeah. And so they wanted to take it seriously and make sure that those candidates understood um, what they were going to be coming into and just how, how much you know, that the students were taking that seriously and had an investment in the future of this institution. And so uh, switching gears to that, now having announced Dr. Mosley, what advice would you have for him? I mean, you were there at the very beginning of John's tenure and gave him sound advice um, and set him on a path that, that did so well for this institution. What advice would you give for Dr. Mosley? Sharon? Well, I, I wouldn't presume to give any advice to Dr. Mosley. I'm looking forward to meeting him. I'm hoping we get to spend some time with, with he and his wife. That would be wonderful in his family. Yes. But um, one thing I, I think is, has been important to John's success is Robin. I think Robin has been an important asset to Morningside. And I, I think anyone who's on the campus knows that. But in her professional life, remember, she's been involved with many colleges and universities, um, and that gives her a unique perspective. And also in, in talking with John about the concerns at Morningside, I think that's been very helpful to him. She's always, of course, supportive of John. And as you know, she's always supportive of everyone associated with Morningside. And just a few examples, though, of all the things she's done. She has her book clubs that she's done with so many different groups, and uh, they're often on campus walking their dog, as Jim said, in the evenings, and then stopping by and talking to whatever students are out. And I know sometimes yeah. students go out because they know that the president, Robin, will be there, and they can talk with them. And she's entertained several times a month in their home. She entertains all the students in small groups, so all of them get to go to the president's house faculty, staff, the board of directors, the alumni, they're always entertaining people. And it's, uh, she's done so many things. Plus, remember uh, one of Robin's sons also attended as a yeah. student at Morningside and graduated. And that gave John and Robin a unique perspective as uh, parents of a student at Morningside. And I yeah. think that changed some of their perspective uh, having that that person as uh, on Morningside's campus <laughs> and have a son there. I can imagine the pressure of the faculty of having that, that's for sure. <laughs> they were very good though about not interfering. They really did a good job. That was hard, I think, occasionally, but they really did a good job not interfering. And I think he had a wonderful experience as well. Yes. Yeah. But she has been a wonderful asset to Morningside and such a blessing. Yes. Most certainly. I too would not really have much advice uh, for Dr. Mosley, uh, but I would suggest one thing, and that is Morningside has a very unique culture. And that culture is ingrained deeply in the faculty, the student body, the staff. Uh, 
on on-campus culture. And something has evolved over the years. Uh, the faculty, as an example, adopting some of the same principles as in the Faculty Excellence Award in their tenure recognition. Uh, there's a commonality in many of those themes. And what it do has done is it's drawn a vision to what Morningside is. And for lack of better term, I would say the Morningside way. It's been charted by John and many others but there is a definite flow to the culture of the institution. And I think that it's paramount that that be preserved yeah. and utilized and used mm -hmm. to further the college in the next generation. And it's not That's something funny. you can define in, you know, in finite terms. It's something you experience as you're there. And John said that too. He said it took him a few years before he really got the feel for what that meant on the campus because it isn't something that's defined easily. Yeah. But he said he really got that feeling as he was there. And uh, so it's something you absorb as you're there on yeah. campus, I think. I think well, you, both just, know, you both know what we're talking about, but <laughs> I think we I think we know exactly what you're talking about. And Sharon, I mean, it's that it's not tangible. That's but right. You felt it. You felt it when you came to campus. We yes. talked about that on your visit, and I think that that's something that I felt the exact same way when I talked to prospective students. I say, you know, take in your time on campus, look yeah. around you, interact with the faculty, with the other students and make sure that it's the right fit for you. And so often it is, you know, it was for me, it was for you. I, I think there is something you're exactly right to the culture of this institution and it's not tangible, but once you get here, you can't help but feel it. Jim yeah. always says, uh, all you can say is something special happens here. Yeah. And that's it, that's, yeah. that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very well. sweet thing. And it's for us, it's just been such a joy and a privilege to be involved with Morningside during the tenure of Robin and John. Um, they're such dear friends and, and we're actually, uh, we don't want to see them leave Morningside, but we do want them to have a little more time so we can spend a little more time <laughs> having fun yes. with them. <laughs> we're Most definitely. To <laughs> I'm sure they're looking forward to it as well. They've heard well, it. I would, I would just say, I really appreciate the opportunity, but I do want to at least offer one last question. You know, if there's anything else that you want to share about your Morningside experience, your work on behalf of the university or anything else that we didn't cover. No, I think it, well, for us, it was a bonding experience. I mean, like I said, we dated in high school and we went to college together. So as a couple, we've been married well over 50 years now, it's uh, just part of who we are, that shared experience. And so many things that we do or say um, come, a lot of them come from that experience that we had and the support and encouragement we got at Morningside. And even Pat, and after we've left Morningside, people have always been very encouraging and supportive. I was told by a mentor of mine who was a graduate of 1922, Leon Hickman, for which the Hickman dining room is named, yeah. and the Hickman Furrow Library. Yeah. <clears throat> I was told by him that you will find after you've been out of college for about five years that Morningside will come to your mind every single day. And it did, and it does. And in closing, I'd just like to say that we both love John and Robin Reinders and hope them the best. Absolutely. And we love Morningside and love to talk about it. So thank you for this opportunity. Well, and Jim and Sharon, we can't thank you enough. Yes. Because as you spoke about how Morningside continues to make an impact on you, the both of you continue to make an impact on this institution. And we are forever. We're grateful, um, not only for the impact that you're having on the students that are here, um, but the, the students that will continue to come here as you spoke to the endowment. We are so thankful, not only to learn of that, but also to learn a little bit more things about you. I did not know the dances or the engagement story, a lot of those things. So it's great to learn about some of those insights as well, even to some of the campaigns. 
And so it's, it's such an honor to have you on Inside Mside, the chance to really learn a little bit more about the two of you and the impact you've had on this institution. So thank you both so, so much. Thank you and bless you.